one really dark, stormy autumn night, around 11 p.m., I was driving back to my house after a late afternoon shift. I took a slight right turn from the main highway through a small, secluded neighborhood. It was raining extremely hard, and my windshield wipers were on the max setting. The car heater was broken, and I was really cold. My hands wouldn't stop shaking while I was holding the steering wheel. And as I approached a bend in this neighborhood of maybe 40 houses or so, I saw a woman, maybe 20 feet in front of me, illuminated by my headlights at the end of the driveway closest to the road. She was in a white dress and looked thoroughly soaked, her arms folded to hug and warm herself. I see her staring directly at my side of the car, and as I approach, being the helpful, young, Midwestern boy that I was, I decided to see if she was okay. My car had hand crank windows, so she could see me leaning over to roll my passenger side down to talk to her. As the window opened no more than three inches, she seemingly unconsciously grasped the top of the window so that the full length of her fingers were now inside my car, which spooked me as it was near my face. Her fingers were pale, and I remember distinctly seeing blood on her fingertips. As I start to ask her if she's alright, I notice that she's young, around 18 or 22, and bawling almost uncontrollably, grasping for breaths between sobs. I get no response from her, so I ask again, Are you okay? Is everything alright? She maintains eye contact with me, but says nothing. The silence is deafening, and the tension is undeniable. I then offer her a ride, but again, she continues to stare, crying, and staring at me, clasping the top of my window. I pause, and contemplatively look at the road ahead, then look back. At this point, I'm hyper aware, and feeling very, very freaked out. As her silence has me wanting to leave immediately, I tell her, I don't think I can help you. She then lets out the most blood-curdling scream I've ever heard. Shivers run down the back of my spine, and my blood runs colder than it already was. I hesitate for a second, taken back by the whole ordeal. I tell her to let go of my window, as she is now grasping intensely, and I can hear the sound of her nails scratching and digging into the glass. I say again, let go. But as soon as I do, she starts bashing and pounding on the window, almost cracking it. I immediately pull away into the night. The whole incident lasted maybe 45 seconds, but I'll never forget it. I have no idea what that poor young woman was doing through that night in the cold rain, but empathy drove me to pull over, and palpable fear motivated me to leave. I've been debating sharing the story for a while now, but I finally decided to do it. So back in the summer of 2018, I was attending a summer German school at the University of Konstanz in Germany. For those of you who don't know, Konstanz was one of the only major German cities during the war to avoid total destruction during the war due to its straddling the Swiss border. So it had one of the last remaining medieval structures in Germany. At the heart of the old town is a cathedral, an old Gothic Baroque building with foundations dating back to early conversion to Christianity. So the building is ancient, and I, being a historian of the early modern period, specifically witch trials, was in love with the city and would spend most of my afternoons and evenings after class wandering the town and enjoying the Renaissance art in the cathedral. I was at a post office near the cathedral one afternoon, mailing postcards, when all of a sudden, a massive storm began. I'd only bought a light jacket with me, and didn't feel like getting soaked on my way back to my flat, or waiting at the post office, so I jogged to the cathedral to wait out a torrential downpour. By the time I got to the cathedral and entered the massive needle wooden doors, I felt something was off, but I couldn't put a finger on it. 
almost like a sense of dread, which I'd never felt before in the building. As I was waiting in one of the aisles of the cathedral, the thunder started to build louder and louder every few minutes, echoing in the nave. Then, out of the blue, the enormous church organ started to play above me, terrifying in its suddenness and volume. That was when I recognized the feeling of dread. I was alone in this feeling. The other people around me all jumped when the first note was played and were glancing around nervously midway through the song. People started milling around again, enjoying the building, and I calmed down a bit. I too figured that the dread was just in my imagination. So, I took up my phone and recorded a short video trying to capture the dark and brooding ambiance of the building and the music in the storm. Soon after, the music faded and a storm moved out over the lake and away from the city. I headed to my flat, but once I got back, I went to send the video to my best friends. But once they received it, they were confused. There was no sound, just silence. I was shocked, because it had been such a vivid experience for me. So I tried playing the video on the album on my phone, and they were right. It was completely silent. No organ. No thunder. Not even my own breathing. Just silence. I tried recording another video here in my flat, and it worked perfectly fine. Sound and all. My phone was brand new, and it never had issues with video before. I've never had an issue since. The sense of dread I felt earlier returned, and I could barely sleep that night because of it. And every time I returned to the cathedral after that, I hoped for a similar response. No matter the weather, no matter the time of day or night, the feeling never came back. I'm a logical and rational person. That was something I just can't explain. I don't know how the organ started, or why it was being played in the middle of a thunderstorm with no service going on. But for whatever reason, it caused my phone to malfunction, and gives me a sense of lingering dread every time I think back to it. When I was about 12 years old, a massive storm blew through my town, and it lasted for about an hour. Within 15 minutes of the storm, my city's power went out, and it was pitch black darkness. So my dad went to get her generator from the garage, as my mom went to get flashlights. As they were out and about, my sister and I were in our game room, sitting on the couch, when we heard three loud bangs on the window. My sister got scared, so I told her it was a tree limb scratching on the window. And then I got up and showed her it was just a tree branch. So I opened the blinds, and it was just a tree. Ten minutes later, there were more knocks, but we figured it was just a tree shrub, so we ignored it, but the knocks kept on repeating. So as I went to approach the window, this time, lightning came crashing down, filling the house with light, and I could see the shadow of a man on the other side of the window. My sister didn't know why I was afraid, so she quickly rushed to the window and opened the blinds, and we both saw a bald, deranged male who looked to be in his late forties. Then he smiled and ran away. He never came back again. I have a lot of scary experiences, but this one would have to be the worst. I grew up in a neighborhood deep in the woods, in an area full of cults and forgotten graveyards. When I was eight, there was a series of thunderstorms that caused our electricity to go out for a few days. Every night the lightning and thunder and the wind howling would terrify me. 
and I would run crying to my parents' room and beg them to let me sleep in their room. On one particular night, I woke up to a lady's voice calling my name. I sat up, realizing I could hear thunder again and thinking my mom had come to get me. Instead, the warm glow of soft candlelight flickered on the walls of my room. A beautiful woman stood in my doorway. She was wearing an old-fashioned white nightgown that looked to be from the early 1900s. She was holding a candle with one hand cupped protectively around the flame to keep the wind from blowing it out. She had long, curly dark hair, deep brown eyes, and looked to be of Native American descent. At first, I thought it was my mom wearing strange clothes, but then she called my name again, and I realized it was not my mother's voice. Are you afraid of thunder? She asked. I was not afraid. Although she was a stranger, her presence was soothing. But at that moment, the thunder roared, and I was scared again. Don't be afraid, she told me, smiling at me. There's nothing to be afraid of. Lightning flashed, and I awoke suddenly from the dream and found myself sitting upright. My mom was standing in the darkness where the lady had stood. Get up. I've been calling your name for the last five minutes. You can sleep in my room. Where is the lady? I asked her, wondering if I was still in a dream. It had felt so real. What lady? The lady in white. My mom only stared at me for a moment, then turned and went back to a room. I haven't mentioned the lady who visited me to anyone since, but I've always wondered who she was. Was she an angel, or a ghost, a dream, or a vision? I guess I'll never know. My mother was in declining health, and I lived with her. I was at work when she called me and told me that some elderly woman had come to the door during a very bad thunderstorm and started banging on the door and asking to come in. My mother told her to leave, but she continued banging on the door, but it stopped when my mother called. The storm had passed by this time. Police responded to my call and didn't find the woman. Several weeks later, we had a very bad thunderstorm, and it was in the middle of the night. There was a knock on the door. I turned to the light outside the door, and there was the woman, banging on the door, begging to be let in. I could see her through the peephole. My mother told me, don't let her in. This person was frightening my mom. I told the woman to leave in a very loud voice. We kept all the lights on in the house, and both of us were freaked out. The storm lasted for over an hour after that. Because the weather was bad, I didn't call the police, because I didn't think the woman could get into the house. Several months passed. My mother passed on. I forget about these two incidents. This is in the afternoon, as we are about to get a bad storm. I hear a knock on the door. No pounding, just one knock. I saw this woman, but she seemed like she was very confused, or in some sort of daze. I was very quiet. Right before the rain came, I looked out, and she was nowhere to be seen. It's never happened again. I found out from a neighbor that they had seen this woman walking around the neighborhood the third time that she appeared, and she seemed like she was in some kind of daze or trance-like state. She didn't go up to anyone else's door, but my neighbor felt her hair 
go up on end when she saw this person. I have no idea what her motive was, or why she came to my mother's home. But whatever it was, I'm just glad that it never happened again.